Hello again. Today we will be cooking one of my more recent curry based recipes using an electric pressure cooker. This pressure cooker I picked up for the princely sum of 35 quid which I think represents excellent value. Of course it can be used for things other than curry bases. It can be used to pre-cook ingredients such as meats, uh, vegetables, of course rice and things like dals. So if you haven't got one, consider getting one because it's easy and fuss free. This curry base recipe will make about 3 litres of curry base which will be sufficient for about 8 to 10 curries depending upon how much you add to each curry. So if you add 300 mils of curry base to your curry, you can make 10 curries. This is what you'll need to make this curry base. About 1 kilogram of common or garden brown onions, that's the peeled weight. About 70 grams of fresh garlic. 175 millilitres of vegetable oil, this is canola oil. 1500 millilitres of water. 4 teaspoons of spice mix. Two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of dried fenugreek leaves or metti, fifty grams of concentrated tomato paste, one teaspoon of coriander seeds, one teaspoon of white cumin seeds. 50 grams of ginger, fresh ginger, that's the peeled weight. 50 grams of a potato, that's the peeled weight. 50 grams of green capsicum or bell pepper if you prefer. Uh, Deseeded and decored. 50 grams of carrot. And 30 grams of coriander stalks or coriander roots. These are roots. You can use the leaves, but it may give a green tinge to your resultant curry base. So that's what you need. Okay, I have used the blender to blend the garlic and ginger. I've coarsely chopped the onions, chopped each one into eight pieces, sliced the carrots and the capsicum and potatoes and we're good to go. All you need to do is add all the ingredients bar the spice mix and coriander roots to the pressure cooker, put the lid on, set the time and it's good to go. Chopped onions, each onions chopped into eight parts. Sliced carrots, green capsicum and potatoes. Garlic, which I've simply chopped using a mini whiz. Same with the ginger, fresh ginger chopped in a mini whiz. Coriander seeds. white cumin seeds salt dried fenugreek leaves or kasori metti
tomato paste, double concentrated. Tomato paste, double concentrated. Vegetable oil. And water. So at this stage, we are not adding the spice mix or the fresh coriander. We'll add that later. Whack the lid on. Make sure the valve's closed. Turn it on. And we'll set that for 90 minutes. And she's good to go. So once that's heated up and the temperature and pressure has been obtained, then it will cook for 90 minutes and then switch it off or go into a, just keep warm mode. So we'll see you, see you later. Please feel free to join us on our British Indian restaurant style curry cooking forum at bircurries.co.uk where you will find detailed written instructions and discussions on this recipe as well as many many other delicious curry recipes. You will have to register in order to access the recipes but registration is free and you're more than welcome to join us. We hope to see you there. Okay that's cooked for 90 minutes now. We've turned it off and released the steam. Let's see what we have. You can, of course, fiddle around with the cooking times to suit your own pressure cooker. But what we want to achieve is to cook it sufficiently long so that the onions are soft and translucent and are soft enough to blend. Those and the other vegetables are soft enough to blend. You can see that they're, they're pretty soft. Of course they're not melted because that makes no sense at all for an onion. Onions do not melt, just for the record. But they're soft, translucent, and should blend nicely. We'll let that cool down a little bit, maybe for half an hour or so. Before we blend it, we're going to use a stick blender. And if we do it too hot, then it may damage the stick blender. But it's best to do it when it's reasonably warm, because it will blend easier. You should be able to see that the, um, the oil is already separating and floating on the surface. You could possibly cook it for an hour or so, uh, but the longer you cook it for, the sweeter the onions become. Let's see the oil there. It already smells delicious, even before we've added the spices. which we'll do now. Coriander roots, I've uh, washed those thoroughly. You want to make sure you get rid of all the sand and grit from within the, within the roots. Otherwise, every mouthful you take will have a gritty texture. And I've chopped them a bit. Spice mix. Just stir that in. And when it's cooled a little bit, we'll blend it with a stick blender to get a nice smooth gravy.
We're going to be using a handheld stick blender to blend the curry base. This is a 700 watt motor and it has a metal shaft which is better able to withstand the, the hot temperatures of the curry base than a plastic shaft. So if you can get one with a metal shaft you're probably well advised to do that. It's also got variable speed control and it also has a soft start so it starts slowly and then builds up speed to prevent you splashing the ingredients all over yourself. Of course you can use a kitchen jug blender to do the same job and in my opinion it does a far better job than a handheld stick blender but it's much more of a faff. But if you do use a kitchen jug blender make sure that you have cooled the curry base substantially and that when you fill the jug you only fill it to no more than half full otherwise if it's warm and over full when you hit the on button the curry base is going to splatter all over the ceiling and probably all over you possibly injuring you okay so we've let the curry base cool for a, a little while when you're happy that it's sufficiently cool not to damage the stick blender blend it for a couple of minutes so we've set it on the, the highest setting and we're going to use the the soft start we'll start slowly and we'll give that a nice blend for a couple of minutes until we've got a nice smooth consistency a six liter capacity pressure cooker I guess we could possibly put a little bit more in there but um, yeah, probably about three liters is about right okay this is the sort of consistency you should be looking for at this stage it may appear to be reasonably thin uh, which is okay you, don't, you want, don't want it too thick but it will thicken up once you've finished and, and it cools it will be a little bit thicker than what it is now okay so what we're going to do now is put the lid back on close the valve and we are going to cook it for a further 30 minutes again using the manual setting set it for 30 minutes Once it's back at temperature and pressure, it will cook for a further 30 minutes. We'll come back then. Okay, so we've recooked it for 30 minutes. Let the steam escape. See what we got. Of course, you don't need a pressure cooker to cook this curry base. You can do it in a conventional way, on in a pan on top of the stove. But you may have to cook it for longer to get the same result. It's worth noting that a curry base should be mildly spiced it should be like a mildly spiced vegetable soup because it has to be sufficiently versatile to make a whole range of curries from the very mild like kermas and chicken tikka masalas to the very hot like vindaloos and farls okay the pressure's released so let's remove the lid and see what we got There you have it. Now you can use the curry base as it is now, but um, we've let it cool down a little bit and we're going to give it a final blend to make it nice and smooth. do us that's the final result
we'll let that cool down a bit and then we'll package it up ready for storage either in the fridge or in the freezer so, and there you have it about 300 to 350 millilitres of curry base in each container and each container has a capacity of 650 millilitres and they have lids so you can label the lids and if you don't use the curry base immediately you can store it in the fridge and if you don't use it within a few days then you can store it in the freezer then when you want a curry you just take it out defrost it reheat it and, e and each container is sufficient for one very generous portion of curry or two modest portions so please feel free to join us at bircurries.co.uk to find out more about this recipe and many 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 other British Indian restaurant style curry recipes and other more traditional style curry recipes you'd be more than welcome to join us thank you for watching and hope to see you soon bye for now